Hey everybody, this is Brad Dyke saying hi. Just reaching out to you tonight to uh, touch base on a couple of things which I'm doing. As you can see down here on the floor, I am working at cleaning and prepping the lab to get that ready. But I also decided I was going to go ahead and do something else. I was going to go ahead and pull out my Nortel 6500 series chassis platform which has got the support rails that I jerry-rigged way back when. And it's got all the cross-functionals and so on. It's a good switch, lasted me many years. And I'm going to transition it over here to the test place platform, which will allow me to have basically three different layers of high-performance networks at one gig level with a step hybrid. And I'm going to be putting this Juniper series, 30, uh, 3100 series, 10 gig in its place. Now what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to put in a larger 10 gigabit platform environment and that will also allow me back here to re relocate this 10 gig 4 port which is right here, it's very, barely visible right there it is, as you can see uh, relocate that 10 gig switch over to the other side into this rack enclosure and it will act as the bandwidth tester configuration for the lab test work environment. So I can isolate the 10 gigabit architectures, two separate 10 gigabit architectures side by side. I'll have 14 here and four over there. So the first thing I'm going to do, of course, is to pull out this big guy right here. And if you noticed right here, uh, these GBICs are of an older generational GBIC, but uh, more synonymous with uh, like Cisco models. And it is a bigger platform, it does work, but over time you find that its compatibility, it gets weaker and weaker over time. So I've decided to stop using those because I'm not really seeing the greatest performance levels that I want, but I could use these to cross platform to the secondary switches down here. And it's a one gig architecture as well. So with that being said, I'm not going to cross platform these. That's the key detail. If I do, then I'm going to have some issues. Uh, so I'm going to keep that switch, which will be different than this switch. And when I want to isolate them, I just pop out the GBIC and we are good to go. And up here is a 10 gig loop. Now I'll probably move the 10 gig loop off of the 10 switch set and bring it down here. And then I will run the um, environment a little bit faster and a little bit more cleaner. And that will help us keep oh, pretty much most of the overhead in check. Now with that, give me a few minutes here as I pull this guy out and prep him to be put over there. And get that work done. And then I'll be right back. Okay, so while I'm doing this, here is the Nortel switch. An overview of it. Nortel no longer exists. There's no warranty support. But these are really built built really well. They're telco based. They're they got grounding sets on them. Good cable commit management, dual power supply. But something that's very important that you want to be careful with these Nortel switches is they're keyed. Yeah, that's right. That's not a standard power connector. That's a keyed power connector. So what I mean by that is if you look at this guy right here, you notice I've kind of chewed away at this unit and made it so it was be keyable. In other words, it will fit. No normal power output unit will do that because these can be geared for 208 to slash 120. And so, you know, they want a special class cabling, but all you have to do is set it to 120 mode or let it auto detect 120 and it's just fine. Uh, it's something you can modify yourself if you grab one of these. These Nortel switches are really great core switches to use. And they are very common standing when you look at them up here in the front area. It's a very good image of how it looks. You've got the console interface, your two GBICs, your USB flash cap set right there. All your ports, which are quite a few. And uh, it's just a great overall workhorse switch to work with. Now he's going to have to go into here, in this spot right here. But the only challenge with this is this is a heavy switch. So you can't use what we call the standard C-clip style uh, screw. It's just not strong enough. What you need to use is the compression lock uh, switch, I'm sorry, compression lock screw set. 
And this guy, when it when it gets to locking in, it becomes very solidified, very strong. Now, the only thing I don't like about this one is it's a hex-driven version opposed to being a Phillips. Uh, it's a hex-slash-standard footprint, which is okay. I mean, I can, I can deal with that. It's just a pain in the butt. So I'll be using these four as the front ends, and then I'll use some C-locks like this, or even lower ends for the back rails, because the back rails just help support it. They're not critical in the overall function. They're just there to keep the uh, switch fairly straight because it's such a heavy switch. You need the support rails to do that. And I improvised these rails, so they're not the greatest and strongest, but they do pretty well in general. Uh, they do what I need them to do, and that's just to keep the propped up position in such a way so that it will do what I want. So that being said, I'm going to have to take this in sideways when I do this. And it takes two hands, so I can't video record this while I'm doing that. But um, I'll pull these out. And so the goal will be taking this guy at a slight angle like this, putting him in there, setting him in place correctly after I properly clear the cabling. And then I'll slide it down into its position so it's going to have to be done. Now, I do notice two things. One, this little C-clamp is kind of cockeyed, so it's going to interfere with the next bolt. So I'll have to realign that, but you got to make sure that when you're doing this, you're doing it right now. Like I said, this is all about experimentation and planning and so on. So here you can see the Raspberry Pi cluster. Up here you can see the disk array, and up here you can see the Proxmox clusters. Now I can transport all of these guys down into this lower switch, opposed to having to transition and trunk over to the other rack, which I don't want to do anymore. So that's one of my driving motivations for doing this. So... Next thing I'll be doing here is I'll be clearing the port configurators themselves, these guys, and getting them out of the way. Because they're actually going to come in in a different kind of way, but these belong to the pies right here. So I'll coil this patch set up and up high up here temporarily until I can get everything in place. Outside of that, I think everything else is in pretty good shape. The only thing else I can think of maybe that might be a challenge is I might want to go a little higher and the switch placement to maybe to 23 and give me a little bit more hand room to get into and feed cables into the slack section if I need to. So that's something I'll think about. Anyways, so uh, back to work.
Okay, so now I've got spacers fit and in place for air circulation is now controlled. All the cold air is going to feed from the front and out the back as I expected it and needed to do. And this will then allow me to go ahead and start bringing over the cable management strategy and start staging and prepping for bridging one gig pipes over here. So with that being the case, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run all fiber pairing, true genuine fiber pairing, from 10 gig to 1 gig outbound uplink. And then cat 5 will be for front end connectivity and 10 gigabit will be for data busing connectivity. So give me a minute here while I get all these wonderful cables all re-hooked up again. Okay, so now we've got the staged. We have all the ports in place. The true NAS is up and running. We're dark fiber on the secondary NAS, which is down here. This one's going to phase that one out, and then I'm going to work on that one. Figure out what's wrong with it, because that one pikes, it goes up and down constantly, where this one does not. And when it comes on 10 gig bandwidths. So I've kind of I've standardized them. You see you've got one right here that is 10 gig copper, but is not RJ45. Not to confuse the two, because there is a little bit of degradation with the traditional 45 versus the actual GBIC variation. So with that being the case, I'm pretty much done here in regards to getting everything staked. So as you can see down here, we have our general connectivity. I'll clean this up later. Uh, this is the core services down here, and then over here, we've got uh, the Raspberry Pis and the Dells wired in down here. We've got the secondary switch, which is below. It's still available for the other test beds, which will be down below, way down there. And now we've got the Juniper in place finally, and I can continue to work on this mess. So. This is Brad Dyke signing off, saying I hope you guys have a good time. Sorry about my mess. Getting better at it. Uh, I only made it, it only cost me a boatload of money and a lot of time to make it this bad. So, hey, it's part of the process. But all in all, the new, the new build out in the garage is helping out a lot. Things are starting to get organized again, and it's just a matter of me finishing it up. This is Brad Dyke signing off, saying God bless and have a great week.